Welcome to episode six. Today, one of the most important things to consider in winter climbing is, as you may have guessed from the fetching outfit, layering or clothing systems. Yeah, right on. Layering is very, very important. You're either going to be too hot, too cold, too sweaty, too wet. It's very hard to be just that Goldilocks temperature in winter climbing. So lots of layers is the way to go. So to begin with, you're going to want a base layer. This is going to be thermal-ish because it's nice to have a wee bit of thermal properties in it. I think this has got a wee bit of a thermal property to it. These on me legs here are actually women's running tights that I got in Lidl for five pounds. But they're quick drying, nice and tight. They've got wee vents on the knees and things. You know, they're pretty good as just a base layer to stick on before anything else. Five pounds in Lidl. I've got another pair that are a bit thicker, a bit fleecier from Decathlon. They were only nine pounds. You don't have to spend a lot on these things as long as they're quick drying, wee bit thermal, bosh them on first. Obviously above that I have this fetching top. 9.99 in Lidl again. Lidl are selling a lot of ski clothing and stuff right now. Always look out for their ski season because you can pick up gloves, socks, base layers, even jackets, trousers, all the rest of it. So Lidl and Aldi are great for that type of stuff. But this was nine pounds, long sleeve, Nice and stretchy, completely flexible, quick drying. I got a large, I normally am a medium in things, but the medium looked absolutely tiny. So I got the large and it's still rather snug. So probably got a size up if you're gonna buy that. But you know, you want it to be nice and tight, nice and close fitting. So that is the base layer, 15 pounds. You can spend loads on merino wool and all the rest of it, but you don't have to. You just want something that's a wee bit thermal, quick drying, moisture wicking, all the rest of it. It's even useful to carry a spare. Greg Boswell said he always carries a spare base layer because he sweats his cajoles off in the walk-in. So he changes it out, puts a nice dry top on. Of course, he's got a super ripped body, so he probably looks buff to all the other amateur climbers as Mr. Greg Boswell stripping off. Wouldn't mind seeing that myself. Wee hero of mine. That's the base layer. Socks are a very important thing to consider. I have been playing about with sock systems. Again, you don't have to spend a lot of money. These, fleecy, very thermal, thick-ish. I'd say they're sort of medium thick. They're not mega thick fleecy ones, but they're kind of thick-ish. These were only 2 dollars in Decathlon, super warm. I probably wouldn't wear them on their own though. So what I'm going to do is back them up with these slightly thinner, but still quite thermal, nice padded foot. Thicker in the toe. Where it counts. Again, 2 dollars from Lidl. Can't really go wrong with that. Six pounds, you've got a very good sock system. So stick them on. Knee high. So, that is your basic fundamentals, keeping your skin warm. On top of the trues, what I used to do was wear a very thin, very lightweight pair of Gore-Tex waterproofs. Price match them at Gore doors, down from 80 to about 45. Again, they're women's. The women's were on sale, the men's weren't. So. These were great, I used to just have thermal leggings, these, nothing else. Sometimes it got a bit cold when I was standing on belay and stuff, so I was starting to think maybe I should get a slightly thicker pair. But for the walking and everything, it's great. You can just air them out, it's brilliant. You can just undo the side zips. It did get a wee bit chilly on the belay sometimes on harder climbs when you're standing about for a bit. Also, these were a bit baggy and I ripped the absolute crap out of them. They have been annihilated, hole after hole after hole, ripping my crampons, snagging my ice axe, sliding down on my bum, ripped it on a rock. Gore-Tex waterproofs and I've ripped the crap out of them. So, I decided this year to go for some alpinism climbing mountaineering pants from 
decathlon for £45 I think. They're quite thick so they'll be nice and warm. They do have some wee side zips for venting so I'm hoping they're not too warm. Useful to have the old braces because it just keeps everything right up here. You want to keep this midriff nice and covered when you're climbing because you're reaching up a lot, you're exposing it to cold air, whoo, blowing right up the nipples. So useful to have the old braces attached. Again, £45. Pockets, never had pockets before on my waterproof so I can keep a wee snack, my phone, whatever. Wee venting side zips for a little bit of moisture release. They do have built-in gaiters but I don't need them because <laughs> Look what I won! Free boots! When I heard Scarpa were releasing a new Phantom Tech, I was looking at pictures and drooling all over them. Entered a wee competition on UK climbing, just randomly. A few days later, I got emailed to say I'd won them. £500 boots for free! So, obviously, people can't just win boots. I think we've already discussed boots before. What's more important are the socks going into your boots. These are super waterproof, built-in gear, all the rest of it, so... Whew! That's them on. I'm going to do a review of these boots because I'm heading out this weekend for my first winter climb. Cannot wait. So I'm going to do a review of these boots because there aren't really any online. I was looking them up when I was looking at these boots and they don't really exist. So anyway, your socks are very important. Play about with what works for you. If you have boots that leak at all, you probably want to get, get wool socks because they still stay warm when they're wet, etc, etc. Read up on that, but socks and warm dry feet are very important. So, that's me bottom half dealt with. Now these trousers they're designed for mountaineering, so they're nice and flexible. They've got crampon protection at the bottom. They're reasonably snug fitting. Don't want any flappy bits to snag your crampons on. Tripping on crampons is a big cause of falling off mountains, so the less flapping about you've got, the better. To go with these trousers, because they're soft shell, they're good for snow, water resistant, good for a shower, bit of drizzle. If I'm gonna be sitting on my bum for a long time on Beely, if I'm gonna be trapped overnight, I'll always take a wee cheapy £10 pair of plasticky waterproofs to chuck on over the top of these if for any reason I'm going to be in conditions which are going to soak through because you don't want to be wet. So always have a wee lightweight cheapy pair of waterproofs to bosh on over these. So next. So to go over your base layer you're going to want a sort of lightweightish mid layer. Again, picked this one up at Decathlon on sale for £10. No bad at all. It's reasonably fleecy in the torso, so it has a wee bit of thermal property going on. It's not particularly thick, but it's, you know, fleecy enough. A lot thinner in the arms, nice and flexible. If you're like me and you get sweaty arms when you're wearing your hard shell, it's good to have a little bit of breathability. If the weather wasn't terrible, I would probably just wear this, head off up to the climb, stick on my hard shell when I was actually climbing or gaining altitude. Or I might take this mid layer off and just go with the hard shell and this if it's bad weather and you need a bit of protection from the elements but you don't want to be going too heavy and sweating. The walk-ins, you're gonna sweat. So it's best to try and stay nice and dressed down for the walk-in so you can breathe, let lots of air in, all the rest of it and then stick on all your clothes just as you're gearing up at the base of the climb because you're going to be moving a lot slower, standing on belays, waiting at the top, all the rest of it. Always just have a wee three pound buff. It's just to keep the elements out. Something you can pull up over your face if you need be. You can even pull it up over your head if you want a little bit of extra protection. It's just something to keep the elements of. So that is almost me top player. Hard shells over there. I'll stick that on in a second. So gloves. I have been using quite thin gloves. I've basically been using a wee liner pair of gloves like this. Again, a few quid at decathlon, go outdoors. 
and then using a thinnish pair of winter gloves like this. Nothing too big and thick, nothing too fancy. I actually got these off my brother, didn't cost me anything, but I think I got a pair from Decathlon for about 10 quid, something like that. So, nice and nimble. I like it for undoing carabiners, rope work, all the rest of it. That's the sort of thing that I'll climb with when I need that bit of mobility in my hands. However, when it comes to bee laying at the bottom, I always carry a big fat pair of like mitts like this that I can stick on. When all you're doing is feeding out rope, you don't really need a lot of mobility. You just need to be able to take the rope, feed it out, all the rest of it. You can always work raw for harper, poor form, stick it back on, easy enough. I carry these anyway. I always carry a few extra layers that will keep me warm and dry. Well, probably not that warm, but at least keep me alive if I have to stay on the mountain overnight for any reason. So that's gloves. Again, gloves, it's a bit like socks. Play about with the system that works for you. I'm gonna get a thick, proper climbing pair of gloves. I'm gonna splash out on a decent, fleecy, warm pair of climbing gloves. Cause I've not quite found the right system yet. I still get cold hands sometimes on Beely. Still get cold hands sometimes on the climb. It's so painful, man. It hurts so much. It's the worst pain you'll have on climbing unless you have a serious accident. Because they start to heat back up again. You're hanging off a little grade five, crapping yourself, and your hands are throbbing away. So gloves, like socks, is a very important thing to play about with. Find a system that works for you. Liner gloves are great. Don't have to spend that much, but always carry spare gloves because they will get wet. The pair you wear on the walk-in and the initial approach slopes Good chance you're going to be dunking your hand in snow. Good chance they'll get a bit wet. So you want a nice dry warm pair to stick on when you begin the climb. Possibly even a third pair in your bag that you can stick on once you finish the climb. You're heading back to the car or you're stuck on the mountain waiting for mountain rescue. Who knows? Hard shell. So, very rustly. Somebody invited Russell Crowe to the party. Your hard shell is the thing that's keeping the elements off of your vital organs. Your hard shell has to be waterproof, breathable, windproof, reasonably hard wearing. This is a mountain equipment one again, couldn't afford to buy it new, I got it on Gumtree, basically unworn in new condition for 90 pounds I think. I went for the small because I wanted it to be snug fitting because I don't like excess material when I'm climbing, I don't want anything getting in the way, snagging ice axes. I don't like looking down and not being able to see my feet, baggy things. So I went for small, which is a bit of a gamble because it's quite snug. But you know, I can fit all my layers underneath. I can even fit an extra fleecy layer if I'm particularly cold underneath this. I always carry a wee extra fleece just to stick on at the base of the climb once I've done the walking, because I know I'm going to be moving quite slowly. So I stick that on, pop this on over the top, keeps me nice and warm for the climb itself. You don't have to spend loads of money on a super technical hard shell, but if you're gonna spend a bit of money, this is probably where it's worth investing in. It'll last you for years, good Gore-Tex or another breathable lightweight brand, but it's designed for climbing. It's super flexible, given that there's no excess material. It's extra waterproof on the shoulders, hard wearing where it needs to be, all the pockets are out the way of your harness. You don't have to though, you can spend 20 quid on a regatta waterproof jacket if you want, as long as it keeps the water out, but it'll probably also keep the sweat and the moisture in, so you're probably going to get soaked through from the walk-in. But the hard shell on top is quite important because it's what's going to keep you dry and safe and warm if you're strapped to it on the mountain. Another thing you should have, which I don't have yet, is a big massive belay jacket, just a big synthetic puffy jacket to stick on over the top of everything, pull the hood over, it just goes over the top of your helmet, harness, gear, it's literally just a stick on when you're standing on belay to stay warm. You can pick them up for like 30 quid, get an extra large, something to go right over the top, that'll do you just swell. So that's winter layering. Layering's caring.